Hello and welcome to another special edition of The World Beyond Believe. My name is Mindy Erkin and I'm here today with Paul Marco. We're going to talk today about Satanism in America. Yes, it seems to be a hot topic, especially since they're they're reconstructing the Temple of Baal in Times Square. The uh, Center for Digital Archaeology has decided to erect this uh, blatantly satanic piece of architecture in order to do rituals in at least three cities throughout the world, and I guess it's planned for about 100 cities. The first city is uh, our New York, London, and then there's a city in China where they're going to erect these things via 3D copying. I think it's really important that everybody notice that Baal is another name for Moloch, is another name for Lucifer, is another name for the hundreds of names that Satan has used down through the years. And this piece of archaeology used to bear witness to, in the, in the ancient days, a human sacrifice. You see, what they do with in the Temple of Baal is they do the same ritual that they do every year at the Bohemian Grove. They do uh, the cremation of care ceremony, which is uh, a ceremony that took place in the ancient world, I guess maybe, maybe once a year. And during that time, what they, it would be preceded by a, a sexual orgy, all male, I guess, at Bohemian Grove, but it, it was uh, dedicated to Isis, which is another name for the female incarnation of Satan. And after this orgy, then they would do the cremation of care ceremony. Now, the, in the cremation of care ceremony, they would take young children, which were considered at that time a liability, actually, and they would sacrifice it in the fire to Moloch to ensure continued financial success. Now, since they're building these things, I thought that that would be an important topic to discuss on The World Beyond Belief. And then this week, or it might have been last week, we discovered an article. Now, this article was posted in Veterans Today, and it's by Catherine Frisk. It's called The United States of America is a Satanist Country. Uh, let me read from that, and then we'll comment as we go through this thing. I think it's a really enlightening article. Some time ago, Putin described the U.S. as being Satanist. In Who's Godless Now? Russia says it's the U.S. Putin is quoted as saying, quote, Many Euro-Atlantic countries have moved away from their roots, including Christian values. Policies have been pursued that place on the same level a multi-child family and a same-sex partnership, a faith in God and a belief in Satan. This is the path to degradation, end quote. All right, the article goes on. Most people in the West did not take him seriously. Also note that being godless in the eyes of Russians does not only apply to Christians. Russia has an enviable tolerance for all religions, and both Islam and Buddhism are neither maligned nor persecuted. Putin opened a new mosque in Moscow last year and the head of the Russian Armed Forces is a Buddhist. He was not talking only of Christian values. Religious tolerance also means respect for other people's belief systems, and that does not include pussy riots on altars, chopping down crucifixes in churchyards, blowing up ancient Buddhist statues, or chopping off the heads of Shiite Muslims because they refused to join the murderous Wahhabi Sunni faction. So before we laugh at Putin and his statement, agnostic, atheist, or whatever you may be, please understand that the point I am trying to get across is that you do not have to be religious at all. You do not even have to take sides. But if you look at the social, economic, and political outcome of those who follow Satanism, covertly or openly, the fruits of this psychological mindset become evident. If you're not religious then at least ask yourself some serious questions about the society that you want to live in and recognize that Satanists take themselves very seriously and are just as fanatical about getting converts as some religious orders are. 
the more converts they manage to sway to their cause, the more they can move a whole society into believing that their social, economic, and political dog-eat-dog worldview is the correct one. So to sum it up, lying and propaganda is considered an art form in order to achieve the desired results. 911 comes to mind. Truth is an anathema. Yeah, you can see what's happening, and it's happening all over the different society. I'm, I'm off the article right now. Um, you can see how it's corrupting the children. You can see it in the music industry. You can see it in, in motion pictures. Now, of course, you know, the Bohemian Grove rituals that happen every year with pe for people in high places. The, the reverence for money above all and the worship of the ego. We've done podcasts on the four tenets of Satanism and how that totally fits in with what's going on in our society. But continuing with the article, Mindy's going to read for a minute. Architects and engineers for 9-11, truth murdering everyone and anyone who gets in the way is just all in a day's work. Michael Hastings, Breitbart, JFK, Martin Luther King... Another example is Madeleine Albright, who thought that it was worth it when half a million children died due to sanctions on Iraq. What is that? There is no respect for life. Many of these people, as part of their initiation, in order to be accepted into these societies, are expected to murder someone in cold blood, which could explain a lot of missing persons in the U.S. and cases that have never been solved. Sometimes they are even expected to sacrifice babies in rituals. Child abuse and pedophilia is part and parcel of the Satanist culture. In real terms, one of the few exposures was the Franklin scandal, where young boys were shipped into the White House for sex parties under the Bush administration. Homosexuality is promoted as the norm in society, not the exception. Opposing it as the norm does not mean that you are homophobic. Rather, this is a far cry from gay rights and tolerance for consenting adults. Here are some more recent examples of Satanism in American society. When Obama was running for president the first time, the rallying cry was, Yes, we can. In reverse speech, this comes out as, Thank you, Satan. Okay, let's just put that one down to a freaky anomaly. How about pro-abortion rallies where the demonstrators, not in reverse speech but in forward speech, are chanting, Hail Satan? I guess we could just put that one down to a fashion statement. Gone are the days of teaching family planning, birth control, and responsibility. For them, life is meaningless and murdering your own child is no more or no less than part of ablution. Flush the unwanted down the sewer. The Ten Commandments that were once proudly displayed in public places are now being removed. Other than the religious angle to these commandments, what do they say? Basically, do not lie, cheat, steal, murder, take your neighbor's possessions, and do leave your neighbor's wife alone. Nothing too difficult really for any society to understand or to use as a template for a harmonious political framework. What do we see today along with the Ten Commandments disappearing all over the place? Blatant false reporting in the media that sells itself off as an accurate source of information? Goldman Sachs et al. cheating and robbing the world blind with LIBOR rate rigging, currency rate rigging, gold price manipulation, and high-frequency trading. Yeah, they're <clears throat> the Satanists that are running this country follow Aleister Crowley. And Aleister Crowley's doctrine is... Do what thou wilt. Let that be the whole of the law. So when you're running under that morality, and we have been for a while, anything goes. And you can throw anything that interferes with that out the window. Let me continue with the article. It starts off with whistleblowers in many categories, instead of being praised for exposing corruption, are either suicided that's a new word, by the way, suicided, or sentenced to long jail terms under rigged evidence. Color revolutions in order to replace the leaders in other countries with bought and paid for puppets who will make it easier to covet their possessions. Human trafficking where women and children are sold off into the sex slave trade. Actually, 
I'm going to vary from the uh, article a minute. Actually, that's the biggest growing illegal trade. It's surpassing the drug trade, illegal trafficking. Uh, and they do that for, of course, rituals. Uh, they do it for sex slavery. Uh, they're also doing it for organs. And we made a, uh, a video on that not too long ago, a couple about a month ago, on what they're doing with the people in the human trafficking. You might want to look at that. It's on Pinecone Utopia channel on YouTube. Back to the article. What replaces the Ten Commandments? Why, a statue of Satan, of course, erected in cities across the U.S. Satanism is, Satanism is no longer a fringe cult. Satanism has become part and parcel of American culture, fashion, and politics. And uh, I remember thinking that back in the late 70s, early 80s, when Ozzy Osbourne was coming out, I was thinking, oh, yeah, no, this is a, this is a trend, and, uh, you know, people are going into this, and the new trend will take it away, but it hasn't taken it away. We've been uh, doing satanic rituals and rock music uh, since the 70s, and it's not just a fad. It's exactly what's happening. Let me go back to the article. Recently, Justice Scalia died from a heart attack. Yes, of course. Not only did he die under very suspicious circumstances that suggest that he was either murdered or that his death was faked, and he now lives somewhere in Patagonia under an alias, but the venue where his death took place and the subsequent reports in the media suggest that the Justice Department is now being run by Satanists. But why should anyone be surprised by this? In recent years, there have been many exposures on the nature of Bohemian Grove, a yearly gathering of the top U.S. politicians, bankers, and leaders in industry, an all-boys club, where gay prostitutes are flown in for entertainment, and the highlight of the proceedings is a midnight ceremony in front of the pagan god Moloch with chanting and the required human sacrifice burnt as an offering. If this is where the leaders and captains of industry and the presidents of the U.S. hang out for fun, surely it is blatantly obvious what religion is worshipped in the White House, the Congress, and the Senate. What pagan god runs Wall Street? We are not in Kansas anymore, Toto. So how do you feel about that? How do you feel about voting these people into power year in and year out to govern your country? And what is more mess around with every other country on the planet because they can, and they are. I recently got a wake-up call. Many people pass the above office Hollywood fantasy or a conspiracy theory. I have a friend who watches the most ghastly murder movies. Horror. For him, anything like Quentin Tarantino, for example, is comedy. I do not watch that stuff. A. I've no desire to make it normative in my universe. B, there is too much real stuff going on right in front of me to regard this genre as entertainment. But I happened to mention a mass grave found near Kiev full of bodies that had been dumped, missing their organs, that quite obviously had been removed to sell to the illegal organ trade business, and suddenly I am accused of promoting fear and terror? On the contrary, I and many others are exposing these criminals for who they are, he, on the other hand, is drowning himself in their culture. The trouble is, this criminality is coming to a venue near you soon if you do not wake up and do something about it. And it is real. It is not Hollywood. Yo, Quentin, want to put your talents to good use for a change? You want to be an atheist or an agnostic? That's fine by me. I am not trying to convert anyone to anything here. What I am trying to achieve is to make people aware of the real cultural base note that steers the U.S., and that they want to export it all over the world. Do not expect these people to stand up for human rights anywhere in the world. Human rights are counterproductive to their objectives, and they regard everyone not in their accepted social and political circles to be mere collateral. In fact, collateral damage is how they fob off any and all human right atrocities committed by them. Right now in the United States... They're going through a sh another sham of an election. And what they're doing is they're posing uh, certain people against certain people to 
create a black and white division, liberal conservative, and uh, Soros and the other Satanists are pouring massive amounts of money into uh, disruption, violence. You can see it happening all over. You've got to not buy into that deception. They're all Satanists. <laughs> they couldn't, or else they're controlled by Satanists. I, I mean, it's really, it's really obvious in the United States. Let me go back to the article. Truth, honesty, justice for all, compassion, social responsibility, human rights, a bill of rights, a constitution, all run counter to their program. In order to achieve their aims, they're corrupting societies across the globe, break down the family unit, Break down national pride. Destroy the educational system with common core. Promote sexual promiscuity, deviance, pedophilia, abortion, a drug culture. Co-opt and corrupt political leader with bribes. Set hybrid wars and color revolutions in place in all countries that are not towing the line. Undermine and discredit the values and morals and teachings of all religions. And where possible, turn believers into murderous, intolerant fanatics who go on genocidal missions. One of Hillary Clinton's emails, you know, the ones it reads, quote, with fingers crossed, the old rabbit's foot out of the box in the attic. I will be sacrificing a chicken in the backyard to Moloch, unquote. This is Hillary Clinton. How can you be surprised by this when after Gaddafi was raped, sodomized, and murdered with a sword up the anus, that her response was, quote, We came, we saw, he died. Caligula had much the same mentality. Who or what is Moloch? Moloch was another name for what we know in biblical texts as Baal worship. Matt Barber describes it. Quote, Ritualistic ball worship in some looked a little like this. Adults would gather around the altar of ball. Infants would then be burned alive as sacrificial offering to the deity. Amid horrific screams and the stench of charred human flesh, congregants, men and women alike, would engage in bisexual orgies. The ritual of convenience was intended to produce economic prosperity by prompting Baal to bring rain for the fertility of Mother Earth. The natural consequences of such behavior, pregnancy and childbirth, and the associated financial burdens of unplanned parenthood were easily offset. One could either choose to engage in homosexual conduct or, with child sacrifice available on demand, could simply take part in another fertility ceremony to terminate the unwanted child. Modern liberalism deviates little from its ancient predecessor, while its macabre rituals have been sanitized with flowery and euphemistic terms of art. Its core tenets and practices remain eerily similar. But that was long ago, right? How many of you saw Rosemary's Baby? A Clockwork Orange eyes wide shut. How many abortions are committed daily throughout the world? Have you been reading the news lately? The exposure of pedophile rings in the UK and Jimmy Savile? Roman Catholic priests all over the world sued for sexual child abuse? How many in the banking industry have gone flying off the 33rd floor and splattered onto the pavement below? How many people were burned to death in Odessa in 2014? And what about the pregnant woman who was raped and then strangled with a telephone cord? What about napalm and depleted uranium? How many people go missing in the U.S. today, most never to be seen again? What kind of music do you listen to, and what kind of movies do you watch? What kind of computer games do you play? What is the common theme in all of it? Stand back and take a good hard look at the society you live in and your part in it. Which wolf do you feed with your time and money? I'm not asking you to rush out and convert to anything. If you want to remain agnostic or even atheist, that is your choice. But what I am asking is this. What kind of world do you want to live in? A replica of the 50-foot arch that stood at the entrance to the Temple of Baal is going to be erected in April 2016 in Times Square in New York City. 
In ancient times, child sacrifice and bisexual orgies were common practices at the altars. Is anything much different in New York today? My friend, this is not a movie. Again, that was an article by Catherine Fisk. Uh, I think it was a great article, and it was in uh, Veterans Today. What I want you to think about is the general society in which we live in and how the cultural Marxists employed by uh, the Frankfurt School, Tavistock Institute, and many other organizations related to the Committee of 300 have gradually orchestrated uh, U.S. and Western culture to accept Satanism as a general tenant or a general way to behave. It's easy to look at if you uh, know the four tenets of Satanism. Now, these have been woven into our societies, and, and as a baby boomer, I really have to take a lot of responsibility. My generation really moved this thing, this thing forward. Let's talk about those tenets and see if you can see them, see how they fit into society today. The first tenant is the worship of the ego. It's all about me, the me generation. It's, it's my, um, my things, my money, and that's all that really counts. Um, they trap you in the five sense reality where uh, spiritual things outside of demons and, of course, Satan, are not considered to be real. So we live in a society now that has really adopted and really has fallen into this me, me, me culture. It's all about me. And that's the first tenant of Satanism. The second tenant is moral relativity or um, situational ethics. <clears throat> In this, you can throw out any right or wrong. There is no right or wrong. It's all what occurs to you right now. It might be right to me, but it's not right to you. You know, you, what we've done is we've taken away any right and wrong. And we've left ourselves with this uh, ambiguous, ambiguous kind of way to look at life. Well, yeah, if that's your idea. You know, that's, that's right in your society. And, you know, if you look at something like gay marriage, now gay marriage, I'm all in favor of gay marriage. What, whatever they want to do, I, I don't think that it should be called marriage because it interferes with the legitimate marriage between a man and a woman. But, and the society really needs the legitimate marriage between a man and a woman because it creates offspring and supposedly fosters good citizens for the future. Gay marriage doesn't do that. So although it's a nice idea and uh, it's fine for people to do that, as far as I'm concerned, uh, it certainly doesn't contribute to the society. So, so I think the, the discarding of, uh, uh, of right and wrong and some kind of a moral standard and behavior really has undermined the culture and allowed this do-what-thou-wilt culture. Uh, it's right, whatever you do is right, from your angle, uh, it's uh, it sounds like a cool idea, but it's really um, death for any culture that's adopting it. So that's the second tenet of Satanism. If anything you do, if everything you do is right, and it's all about the ego, that leads into the fourth tenet of Satanism, which which is um, social Darwinism. Social Darwinism is, of course, the survival of the fittest. And in, in our case, the most ruthless. Uh, you can see who's surviving in our culture. The, uh, the, the moralless, godless people that are finding their way into public office and heading up big corporations. Uh, and they're, guiding by, they're guided by these first three principles of Satanism. Oh, the only thing that mo counts is making money and making money for me. I can do whatever I want. Therefore, I get ahead. So it's the survival of the most ruthless in our society. And that's the third tenet. tenet. The fourth tenet is eugenics. And you can see this creeping in even in the common level of society where 
where they're thinking that people aren't a va as valuable. They're not a divine creation. They're simply, simply something that can be harvested for their organs or can be subjected to torture if we need, uh, need to do that. Where aborted baby fetuses can be used to flavor soft drinks. I mean, we've really adopted the, the fourth tenet of Satanism, which is eugenics. The most ruthless, which have surfaced to the top of society, now determine who live and die. And believe me, those people, those most ruthless, are making a lot of money on human trafficking, human organs, sex slavery. It's getting to be a big, growing industry. So I wanted to bring this to your attention. Uh, this temple of this temple of Baal that's being erected in your midst is just in harmony with where your culture is going. And if you want to stop it, you have to do something about it. You have to stand up and recognize it, and do something that'll that'll stop this onslaught and uh, put us back into. Uh, a moral culture, the moral culture from which we we grew. Well, that's that's all we have to say today, and uh, I'd like to wish you all a great week, and uh, take care of yourself, and God bless. Hey, and just one more thing I want to add. Uh, do you think that this uh, archway to the Temple of Baal could be a, a uh, Stargate? like it might be. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Take care.